Hey guys, so I would like to start the uh, last unit in this particular semester, and it's going to be on ballistics. Some of you guys might know some of this material, some of you might not, but I just want to make sure that we are all on the same page. So, here we go. So, I know that recently in the news, I'm not going to have you guys do a quick write, I just want you to think about, okay? Um, there have been several gun and gun law issues recently, right? And we all know that the right to bear arms is going to be protected, protected by the U.S. Constitution, but there is a huge debate, right? And it's not necessarily about owning firearms, it's about the laws and all of the security checks that you should go through to own a firearm. So just think uh, in your brain about some of the things that are going on and if there are things that you would want to change. Uh, remember, this is everybody's issue, but it's going to become more of your issue as you guys get older. All right, so let's talk about ballistics. Ballistics, the definition is going to be the study of bullets and firearms. Uh, a firearm is essentially a weapon that is capable of firing a projectile, and it uses some sort of confined explosive. Uh, forensic ballistics, of, or should I say forensic firearms examiners, uh, can determine all sorts of things from ballistics. They can determine the type of firearm used, they can determine the caliber of the bullet, the number of bullets that were fired, where the shooter was standing, potentially the angle of impact from shooter to victim, and then they'll also be able to tell if a firearm was used in a previous crime, uh, either through maybe it's a special type of bullet, or remember, every firearm is going to have a serial number as well. So there are two different classifications. Uh, there are a few more, but we're going with the classic uh, firearms. So we have the handgun and the long gun. So when we're talking about the handgun, we're talking about pistols and revolvers. They're called handgun because you can fire it with one hand and they can be classified as semi-automatic, meaning that you fire one, bu one bullet per pull of the trigger. Ooh, try and say that five times fast. Or fully automatic where uh, the it fires repeatedly as long as you're holding down to that trigger. In terms of the long gun, we have rifles and we have shotguns. Uh, typically, they're called long guns because they require two hands. Uh, the rifle is going to fire bullets, and shotguns are going to fire uh, pellets. Um, so for pellets, there are going to be multiple projectiles. For a slug, it's going to be a single projectile. right? And then down at the bottom, I just have a few pictures of handguns and long guns, just so you guys can get an idea of what they look like. Although, most of you have watched TV, so most of you know what guns look like. I'm sure some of you also have family members that have guns. You probably know what they look like from that as well. So in terms of cartridges, there are five different parts to a cartridge. The one that everybody is really familiar with is going to be what's labeled one here, and that's going to be the bullet. Here, that is uh, basically labeled in uh, orange here, is going to be the casing. All right, this is normally what we would find at crime scenes as spent casings, meaning that the bullet has been fired. Uh, three in the middle is going to be gunpowder, right? That's going to be the explosive element that is going to fire our fire off our projectile or our bullet. Then down at the bottom, we're going to have a rim. Um, and that's normally when the firing pin is going to hit that area. We'll be able to use it for some sort of identification. And then, of course, you have the primer. Okay, So the firing pin is going to hit down on this bottom of the rim. It is going to set the primer in motion, which is going to cause the gunpowder to become explosives. That's the whole point of a primer. And then it is going to fire off your projectile in your bullet. Right? So I'm going to let you guys watch this video on your own, okay? So you can just click the YouTube video. I'll also post it in the Firearms channel on Teams so that you can watch it and get some more information about how forensic scientists use ballistic information. So let's talk about how a firearm works. So the trigger is going to be pulled, right? And then the firing pin from the firearm is going to hit the base of the cartridge. That hitting of the base of the cartridge is going to ignite the powder inside of the bullet, which is going to create pressure. So the pressure of the ignition is going to push the bullet from the casing and into the barrel of the firearm. 
And then, of course, we talked about the individual characteristics. Well, it's going to get those as the bullet follows the lands and grooves that are on the inside of the barrel. And as the bullet spirals out of the barrel, it's going to leave markings. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow on what the different characterizations are. So for firearm investigation, um, in forensics, it's a method that's used to determine if a particular bullet or cartridge was shot from a particular weapon. Each weapon is going to leave its own unique uh, remarks that marks that you can reproduce on a bullet. Um, and of course, the cartridge that it was fired from. And this is regardless of gun type, style, manufacturer. Uh, firearms identification is extremely useful in obviously forensics because it helps convict criminals of crimes they have committed. And typically, if somebody has committed some sort of murder, it makes your case stronger if you have evidence of the actual murder weapon that goes along with the bullet that killed the person and also gives you a connection back to the suspect if you can trace the serial number and know that they own or bought that particular firearm. So let's talk about these bullet markings. So these bullet markings we're going to call striations. They're going to be scratch marks that are left by uh, left on the projectile as it rifles through the barrel. Uh, each gun is going to contain what we call lands and grooves. And tomorrow when you guys look at your characteristic sheet, you will see what I mean by lands and grooves. So these lands and grooves that are coming from inside of the barrel are going to produce bullets that have this unique pattern. So lands and grooves are basically what's going to make that projectile spin around its long axis when it's fired. Now, if you take a look over here, uh, we can classify bullets basically with two different types of twists. There's one that's called a left twist, obviously, because we have the lands and the grooves that are going uh, to the left, and then we have a right twist bullet. You guys will see some pictures tomorrow that will make this a little bit easier to see. But if you take a look in your gun barrel, you're going to have these things called lands, and then you're going to have these other things that are raised areas called grooves, and that's what's going to make the individual markings on the particular bullet. So here is a picture of striations that you might see. Uh, we have two bullets here. Uh, looks like they are both right twist bullets. So if you take a look, as the bullet was going through the barrel, it created all of these striations. Now, if you look, we're actually using a comparison microscope. So you guys might remember this from the uh, forensic hair uh, unit that we did, right? You were lining up hair fibers and trying to make matches. They do the same thing with a comparison microscope and bullets. Basically, you have one frame where you put one side of the bullet right so you would take the bullet from the crime scene and put it in one frame and then you would take the bullet from the uh the one that you've test fired from the weapon that you've collected and you would try and line them up in the microscope now if you take a look you see all these dark and light lines when those dark lines and light lines match up completely we call that a comparison match, meaning that the bullet from the crime scene was fired from that particular gun. So that is the left side. If you take a look at the right side, like you see all these dark striations here, the dark striations don't run all the way to the other side, right? So we're doing a half by a half screen, right? Half of it is going to be one bullet, half of it's going to be the other bullet, and you need to find a way to match the striations. If they don't match, then that means that that bullet was not the one that uh, fired the crime scene bullet, okay? So what you're looking for are just basically the lines to look the same going all the way across the microscope field. So the other thing we can look at are called breach markings. So breach markings are going to be left on the bottom of the spent cartridge casings. So when the firearm is shot, the explosive force is going to push the bullet forward. I'm sure you, most of you guys have had physics or physical science, right? So according to Newton's third law, it's going to send that casing backwards and it's going to hit against the breach lock. So the breech lock is basically the mechanism that's going to prevent the cartridge from shooting toward the user. Okay, as it recoils, as it comes back, it's going to stop it so that it doesn't shoot you if you're holding the gun. So you'll also see some unique breech marks, uh, sorry, breech block marks. And those are going to be produced as the cartridge casing moves back and hits 
the breach block. It's going to create uh, unusual markings as well, and those can be used for identification. The other types of markings you might see are going to be firing pin markings. So the firing pin is going to leave a unique stamp on the cartridge primer or the rim. So if you take a look here in the middle, you can see where the firing pin um, hit, right, which caused the bullet to project out of the casing, right? So it's going to hit the primer and that's going to cause the bullet to fire. But each firing pin looks different depending on the gun. Usually it's due to the manufacturer, or even the type of gun. Now, how do we test for gunshot residue? So gunshot residue, uh, all firearms are going to produce what we call GSR when they're fired. So the residue comes from traces of smoke and particles of unburned powder that's going to be carried from the firearm by the expansion of gases as the bullet is fired. So gunshots resi gunshot residues are going to contain nitrates, and those nitrates can stick to a person holding the firearm, and it can also leave evidence, and obviously it leaves evidence on the shooter. So the amount of GSR is going to decrease as the distance between firearms and victims increases. So GSR, unfortunately, can be removed by washing, but chemical tests can often detect residue even though the person tried to remove it. Now, the distance between the weapon and the victim can be determined by examining the GSR pattern on the body of the victim. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later on. So I'm going to let you guys watch this video on ballistics identification technology just to get a better understanding of what's going on. And then hopefully you guys will have a great idea of how important ballistics is to forensics. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is a bullet trajectory. So investigators can also calculate the bullet's path or trajectory to find the location of the shooter. Um, it requires for the investigator to basically understand how each bullet is going to behave out of a particular weapon. And then trajectory can be calculated by finding two reference points along the flight path of the projectile. Um, some of the reference points can include uh, bullet holes, wounds, GSR, or spent cartridge casings. So I'm going to have you guys watch this video, and as always, I will upload all of these videos to teams so that you guys can uh, take a look at them and make sure you understand what's going on. All right, the final thing is this little review maze. Um, if you wanted to um, just try and make your way through the maze, see if you understood uh, the different terms in the presentation, this will be a great tool in terms of reviewing for your test. All right, that is it for at least the first part of your ballistics notes. So hopefully that was help you, helpful and hopefully these videos will give you a better understanding about how ballistics is used in forensic science. All right, y'all. Bye.